All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today for our final College of Charleston Admitted Student Expanded Visit Day. Uh, my name is Devin Thompson. I'm Senior Associate Director uh, for Advents with the Office of Admissions, and I will be moderating today's event. We are so excited to welcome you all into the College of Charleston family, and congratulations again on your acceptance. We are thrilled to welcome you, and during today's event, we're going to focus on most of our attention on the academic and student life experiences at the College of Charleston. We're really going to highlight the achieve and enjoy balance we seek to provide each of our students. Today, we're going to hear from a panel of some of our distinguished faculty members, followed by a lively discussion with a panel of our current students. We know you have questions as you narrow down your college selection, if you haven't landed on the College of Charleston already, and we hope to answer all of those today. Before we begin, I'd like to introduce a very special guest to you all this morning, College of Charleston President Dr. Andrew Shu. President Shu. Thank you, Devin. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us this morning. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to one of the most unique universities in the United States. The College of Charleston represents the best of many different worlds. We're an oldest university with a very young spirit. We're located in the middle of a vibrant city, and we have one of the most beautiful campuses in the country. We have century old traditions mixed with cutting edge technology, and our opportunities inside and outside of the classroom are boundless. If you love to learn, the College of Charleston is the place for you. For all of you, this is a most exciting time in your lives as you finalize your college plans. Today, you will have a chance to learn more about the College of Charleston and also have a chance to start picturing yourself on our campus as part of our community of serious scholars. As you probably have read in our literature or seen on our website and social media channels, the College of Charleston follows the liberal arts tradition. That means you will have a, a, an opportunity to take a core selection of general education courses in the humanities, arts, sciences, languages, all of which will help expand your range of knowledge. That range of knowledge will make you a versatile, adaptable, and creative thinker. In today's fast-changing society, range is going to be one of those things every employer is looking for, and it will be the skill set that propels you through your career. Again, Take today to learn more about our great university and be sure to ask many questions. We're all here to answer them. With that, I will turn things over to our College of Charleston Vice President of University Marketing and Enrollment Planning, Amy Takeyama Press. Amy. Thank you, President Xu, and good morning, future Cougars and families. I want to join President Xu in congratulating you on your admission to the College of Charleston. You represent some of the most talented and diverse students we have ever seen. And a very special congratulations to all of those Cougars who have already confirmed your enrollment in the fall. We can't wait to see you and have you be part of the Cougar family. This year, the college received almost 20,000 applications for the freshman class. This is the most in university history. You have been selected because of your extraordinary academic achievements and your desire to be part of one of the finest public liberal arts and science institutions in the nation. We are so proud of your accomplishments during what we know has been another very challenging year. And parents, I join you on this journey as a mother of a high school senior myself, and I applaud the support that you've given your students all along the way. And if you're like me, you're looking for an institution that can not only set your student up for academic and career success, but a place where they feel like they'll belong and will they be part of a nurturing and inclusive community. A place where they'll learn to grow and be challenged, but also be well taken care of and often be given the type of personal attention you might not see at other schools. And I believe the College of Charleston is that place. 
So this morning, I hope you'll learn more about what an amazing place the college is to not only attend, but I would argue completely transform your academic journey and give you the opportunities that will set you apart from your peers. For example, Princeton Review ranked the college's career center number one among public master's level universities based on access to job placement, as well as prospective student and recent alumni experiences within the center. The college was also named a top 10 school for its first year experience program in US News and World Report, a poll of academic peers across the nation. Now, these are just a couple of examples of the value of a CFC education. And while our list of accolades goes on, I've often thought while rankings are nice, they don't mean much if we can't give you examples of this success. And that's exactly what this morning is about. You'll hear today from some of our renowned faculty who are not only leading experts in their fields, but dedicated to student success and creating a unique in and out of the classroom experience focused on the individual student, which I believe is a hallmark of a CFC education. And of course, you'll hear from our students, our outstanding and resilient Cougars who represent a wide variety of academic disciplines and a sample of our diverse student body committed to making our community a better place every day. I'm in awe of their talents and dedication, and I know that you'll learn so much from them about what it means to be part of Cougar Nation. So again, congratulations, and I can't wait to see you in the fall. Devin. Thank you, Amy, and thank you, President Shu. We're now going to get started with our faculty panel. Today we have a fantastic uh, lineup of our distinguished faculty joining us. So I'm going to hand it over to Lee Meadows McAlpin uh, to begin um, the introductions for that. Lee. Thank you so much, Devin. I'm happy to be here with everyone this morning and we appreciate all of you joining us. I would like to start by introducing our faculty panelists. To lead us off, we have Dr. Elizabeth Meyer Bernstein, who is Dean of our Honors College. We also have joining us Dr. Sebastian Van Delden, who is Dean of the School of Sciences and Mathematics. We have Dr. Jay Forsyth. Jay is Assistant Professor, Department of Chem Chemistry and Biochemistry, and Dr. Nanad Radakovic, Assistant Professor of Math, excuse me, Assistant Professor and Math Educator in the Department of Education. So that uh, tells you a little bit about who will be answering some of these questions. And I'm going to kick us off by starting with our first question. And uh, of course, um, hopefully these will answer many of the questions that you all have as uh, incoming students. So the first question I think is especially timely as you round out your high school careers. As students transitioning from high school class settings to college courses, what are some striking differences between high school and college that students should know? And what is one tip that you can give students to successfully transition from high school to college academics? Uh, Dr. Radakovic, can you start us off with the answer your, your response to this question? Sure. So I would like to say that when you transition from high school to college, your world expands. So there are so many exciting opportunities, both intellectually and also in terms of geography. You're going to learn, probably live in a new city, and there are so many things that you can do in the class and outside of class, so many disciplines, so many new ideas. And that will be very overwhelming. High school structure is much different than a college structure. One word that I use is expansion. Right? Everything just becomes much, much, much bigger. And uh, it's sometimes hard to, to manage that new world in terms of time, in terms of organization, etc. One tip that I have is have a calendar, right? Have like a place where you can write everything down. It sounds trivial, but when you have to balance five, six, seven, ten things a day, it's really helpful. And have, have one place where you write all that down. Thank you. No, very good thoughts. Dr. Uh, Van Delden, Dean Van Delden, would you like to add to this? 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hey everybody, my name is Sebastian Van Elden, the Dean of the School of uh, Sciences and Mathematics. And before I give you my tip uh, to add to what Dr. Nanad just said about time management, which is so very important, I wanted to do some shameless self-promotion uh, to make sure you know that I do a tour of the STEM facilities here, the two big science buildings, every Friday at 3.30. There's still two Fridays left in April and would love for you to join uh, my tour uh, on one of these Friday afternoons. And if that doesn't work for you, please feel free to reach out to me, Sebastian, at the College of Charleston, and I'm happy to meet with you as a one-off and give you a personal tour of the facilities. All right, so going to college, and I'm so excited about this fall. We're getting back to normal, right? We've already planned for a couple months now to be back to the new normal starting this fall. And some of the things I'm excited about would be the tours we do. We have all these companies in the area. I personally drive around some of our vans and carry our students to visit these various companies in the area so that uh, they can kind of see what all you can see what all is available to you here in the community. We do a big research mixer helping you connect to the faculty uh, here in the school and all of our schools and departments across campus, whether you're interested in business or psychology or music or whatever, there is something for you to get involved in with the faculty in their labs or in the community in terms of internships and the like. So with all this coming at you this fall, what's the tip, right? Get engaged your very first semester. Your first semester in college, like Dr. Nanad said, is so very important because uh, it, you need to figure out those time management skills early on. I would highly encourage you to declare your major as soon as possible. That way you get a faculty advisor. Uh, if you can't decide between one major, declare two majors in the very beginning and have two faculty advisors who are very familiar with the curriculum and the programs within that department to help you get engaged. Getting engaged your first semester is so very very important. Uh, it also means asking for help. Professors like me, you know, I'm teaching a course right now and I am lonely in my office hours when no students show up. So please know that your professors want you to show up to their office hours should you need help. We have a great tutoring center here. Go to the tutoring center if you need help. Don't feel afraid or embarrassed that you need help. Everybody does. So please do reach out to your professors as soon as you need help. Go to the tutoring center get engaged in your department, uh, see what the student clubs are up to by declaring a major, then you will know that you have student clubs in your department and the events that they're planning. They want you to show up, don't feel shy. Uh, please get engaged and have a great first semester, super important to your success in college. Thank you so much, great responses. Anyone else have anything to add to question one? Hi, Lee, oh, I can add to that. Please, um, Dr. Forsyth. Yeah, I, I agree with everything that's been said so far and about time management. You know, I, I think one of the main differences between high school and college is in high school, everything is very structured and in college you have a lot of freedom with your time. But sometimes what happens is students kind of, you know, they get distracted with all these things going on and they study at the last minute and studying at the last minute in college doesn't usually end out end up well. <laughs> so, um, you know, it. I really recommend to my students, particularly early, you know, like freshmen and sophomores, um, you know, if you can almost set, like set aside blocks of time, they, like like in high school where you would for your all of your other classes, right? But specifically for studying for specific classes, right? You know, like in, in my chemistry classes, if you study 30 to an hour, 30 minutes to an hour a day, you know, you don't you don't need to you don't need to cram it right before the exam, right? And then um, and it, it makes it not only does it help you learn better, but it also makes everything a little bit less stressful. And so I'm um, really, you know, I like they said, I think time management is huge and it's definitely it's definitely something that takes a while to learn for yourself Right? everybody has their own kind of like time system. You know, some people are night owls and some people like to wake up early, you know, um, students typically learn that for themselves. Right, but um, you know that that first year in particular is is a time to almost experiment a little bit with how you study and the time the times that you allot for different classes and things like that. And as you get older and you as you spend more time at, at college, you become more efficient with your studying. Where you could probably study, you know, in five hours what you used to take fifteen for. Very good feedback. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and put you on the spot and throw question two to you. Uh, Dr. Forsyth, what do you expect of your students? Sure. Um, 
I mean, first of all, I expect my students to engage and really want to learn the material, right? You know, I, um, I think that the enthusiasm that you have for a subject is really important. And, you know, so I, I try to teach with enthusiasm. You know, I love what I do and I, I, I hope that that comes through. I, I think it does, right? And um, likewise, you know, I, I recommend to students, you know, explore things that you really care about but also be open to exploring new things, things that you maybe haven't studied before, right? You know, I think that's one of the really um, powerful things about college is you really get to um, dive deep into subjects, but you also get this breadth of different information, like different subjects that maybe you hadn't even thought about before, right? And so, um, you know, just kind of that enthusiasm to really dive into something, but also to try something new. Um, I think that's really important. And then also just to, to work hard, right? You know, like I, like we said before, um, it's not always easy to be consistent with your studying. You know, it's easy to fall back into putting stuff off to the last minute. And in particular, you know, sometimes students who, who kind of get away with that in high school uh, think that they might be able to get away with that in college, and that's not, not usually the case. <laughs> very true, very true. Thank you. So this is an interesting question because it can be answered from a variety of different perspectives. Who else would like to give some feedback on this particular question? What I do you expect of the students? Thank comment. you, Dr. Einstein. Go ahead. Before, before I comment on this, I also want to give a, a shameless plug like Dr. Van Delden did for an a, uh, event that the Honors College is having this Thursday. It is a tech, Take the Next Steps Honors Edition. And it's Thursday, the April 22nd at 6 p.m. And I think Devin's going to put a link in the chat for all of you um, to go ahead and sign up for that. It is not too late to apply to the Honors College. So um, if you're, you know, maybe you didn't know about it before and now you're learning more about it and you're, um, as you're learning more about the college, feel free to uh, reach out to us. We will um, have a conversation with you on whether or not we think that it would be a good fit for everyone. So with regards to what do I expect of my students, I expect my students to take ownership of their education and their own learning. I think one of the differences between high school and college courses is in high school, in many instances, the, the teacher tells you most of what you need to know during that class time during the week. Um, college, you can see your faculty is more kind of a guide to what you need to then go out and learn on your own. So if you just show up to class and think that that's all that you need to know for the exams, for the learning outcomes, for the papers, that's probably not going to go real well for you. So you need to kind of take what the professor says and so, say, OK, these are the things that are important, important. And so these are the things that I need to then take some ownership of and learn um, on my own with either peers or if you're having um, trouble, always come and to our office hours. Like Dr. Van Gelden said, we really encourage um, that communication with the students. Excellent feedback. That's great. Thank you. Who else would like to? I can go. I can go to uh, being in the Department of Teacher education and being in charge of educating future teachers, uh, my main uh, teaching philosophy deals with active learning and engaged learning. So I want my students in the class to be engaged and be active and participate in the activities. And uh, so think about uh, your time in class and after class is, is not something that's passive, that you're waiting for somebody to give you knowledge, but for you to actively participate in the learning process. I think that's uh, extremely important. It will put you in a situation when you can learn more. Great thought. Very good. Thank you. So we'll move on to question three. Can you speak to the value and importance of your class syllabus. And I'll add, how is the class syllabus in the college setting different from that of a high school setting? So uh, Dean Bernstein, would you like to take this? Sure, I'll go ahead and start off. So the, um, the syllabus is very, very important in college. It really lays out the expectations um, of the course. 
um, the learning outcomes of the course, and also um, resources um, for the student. Not only contact information um, for the faculty members so that you can go to their office hours or email them or call them, but also campus resources um, if you need them for, um, for, for any reason, for learning support or any other type of support. Um, the, the syllabus is kind of a contract really between the faculty and the student. Um, most faculty will spend a considerable amount of time discussing their syllabus with the students at the beginning of the class. I know that when I teach, I spend the whole first class period going through my syllabus so that the students are very clear as to what their role is in the learning and what my role is in, in, in delivering kind of those, uh, those guidelines and that material to you. Um, there's also a lot of information in the syllabus with regards to deadlines and when papers are due, when quizzes occur, when tests are, and those are gonna be your responsibility to kind of keep track of. So I believe um, there was a comment earlier by one of my colleagues about putting together a schedule and a calendar. That's gonna be really important. I know in high school, a teacher might say, okay, let's all get ready for that quiz tomorrow, or don't forget your papers are due you know, on Wednesday. That's not necessarily gonna be the case in college. You might get that from some faculty, but it's really going to be your responsibility to look at those dates on those syllabus and then make sure you're on top of all of those assignments and all of those um, the deliverables on, on your end. All very true and very good thoughts and pretty accurate there. Uh, who else would like to add to this question? I can chime in. Um, so I uh, you know, every class is different, right? And there, are, I think sometimes students just kind of assume that all classes will be graded the same or things like that. And that's not always the case. And so it, it really is important that students um, pay close attention to the syllabus because sometimes that will, um, that will the, something in there might be different than what their other classes were like. Like for example, I taught a first year experience course in the fall and the way that I graded the course, it was it, it, so I'm a scientist, but it was a writing. It was like writing about science. And so all of, there were a bunch of writing assignments and I graded them um, with the technique called specifications grading. So basically there were certain criteria for each paper and they weren't graded A, B, C, D, F. They were graded pass fail, but you could if you didn't pass the first try, you could resubmit with changes and things like that, right? And so, you know, that that course was graded differently than how I grade my lab classes, right? And so, you know, if, if students just kind of assume that all the classes are going to be like evaluated the same without paying much attention, they could be in for a surprise later in the term. And so it really is important to keep keep an eye on that stuff. Mm -hmm. And those are details that would definitely be covered in the syllabus and, and, and explained. And if students are paying attention to that, they right. will know. Thank you. Good advice. Who else? All right, so we'll move on to question four, and that is, how do you encourage or motivate your students to engage in your class, to be fully participative? And Dean Van Delden, I'll throw this one to you, if that's all right. Yeah, yeah, totally. So, um, you know, one of the reasons the students like to come to the College of Charleston is because in general, your class sizes will be a little bit smaller than uh, the big, uh, the big huge universities that you could you could also uh, possibly go to. You know, we're not teensy tiny uh, little university, but we're certainly not a, a humongous university at, at the same time. So because of those kind of smaller class sizes, it enables a professor like me uh, and all of our professors to be a little more active in, in case so we're not just talking at you, uh, we're talking to you and kind of prompting you with questions throughout the lecture to, to just help you participate, get engaged and by and it helps you to pay attention in class and absorb the materials. So, you know, this this semester I got a class with uh, 30 students in it, which is a big class here. All right. Um, but by the second day of class, um, I've memorized everybody's names and faces and, and by doing that, 
I can uh, spontaneously call on you in class to comment on whatever it is I just said in class, and it just helps you pay attention and be and be engaged, and and that way it makes the class time go by quicker, helps you retain the information better, and I think you know pound for pound, uh, we have amazing academics here at the College of Charleston. You know, going to college is not just about the academics, it's about the entire experience, but of course academics is a very important part of your college experience. And so uh, you, you'll find here, pound for pound, we have awesome professors who care about your learning and will be doing a good job getting you engaged in class. Thank you. Who else? I can chime in, Lee. Lee. So, um, in the Honors College, a lot of the classes are a little bit smaller even than um, Dr. Van Delden's class, who, which is on the small side. So ours are typically about 15 to 19 students. And um, most of them are very discussion based. And so, you know, you'll do some readings before you come to class and then you'll have a lively discussion amongst your peers. And that just always really gets students very engaged. Um, the topics of the courses um, are, are very unique to um, not only the college but also to the honors college so say for instance we've got um, a really cool course um, um, called the history of, of war and i'm sorry the um the ecology of war and so this is a course that's taught between a science faculty and a history faculty and they do readings using both types of methodology and really look at the impact of war over time on the local ecology wherever they happen to be studying that in the world so i think this is just one example of a really unique class. It's not only taught in the Honors College, but there are unique classes all over campus, really creative courses that have um, really engaging material that you just students inherently are interested in. And so our faculty um, overall are just really um, great at, at, at creating stuff that students are inherently interested in. That's great to hear. That's great. Who, who else would like to add to this question? Yeah, just uh, from uh, the point of view of uh, teacher education, our uh, students will become teachers and I, we always motivate them with different opportunities to volunteer and uh, teach uh, students in, in local schools. And uh, it's particularly exciting during their uh, junior year they get to go once a week into the actual class and work with students and then come to different teaching method classes. I teach the math teaching methods and then talk about what they've observed in a class. So engagement becomes uh, in a way practical way to look at their future profession of teaching. It's a good point. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to question five. If a student is struggling, what do you recommend that they do? Uh, let's see, I think we have Dean Van Delden for this one. Oh yeah, so you know, I think I kind of answered this earlier in, in one of my first questions, but in case you tuned in, you missed the first part of this, you know, academically, right? If you are struggling in a course, number one thing you got to do is go to your professor. Number one thing you got to do is don't feel bad about not understanding a topic uh, that was presented in class. So that's normal, okay? And so you need to know that professors want you to come to their office hours and ask for help. And if the office hours don't work because they overlap with, you know, work that you have to do or uh, another class or whatever, email the professor, let them know. Uh, most all professors will make arrangements to do one-off, you know, office hours with you uh, to, to make sure that, you, that you're keeping up with the material and, and so on. We have an amazing tutoring center that's in the library right here in the heart of campus. It, it's not a scary place, so please go to the tutoring center. Sometimes you don't even have to ask for help. You can just go there and study, and, and, and then if you need help, tutors are there to provide that help. So academically, know that we have these services, we want to help you. But then, of course, there's other reasons why you could be struggling on campus. You're you're going through a lot in your life, uh, whether it's emotionally, logistically, with housing, all these things. 
and we have <clears throat> excuse me support services on campus uh, that are there to help you. So the main takeaway I'd like you to remember is just don't hesitate to ask for help if you need it. Everybody does at some point in time in their life, so make sure and take advantage of that. That's absolutely right. Everyone needs help at some point, so it's nice that we have so many options to um, aid students in so many various ways. Uh, who else would like to add to this question? I can add, Lee. Thank you. Um, so I agree with what Dr. Van Dellen said. We've got wonderful resources on campus. There's your um, your professors as well as some other just institutional resources. But also I want you to not forget about your advisors that you have. So um, you'll have you know, a major advisor. Um, you'll have, if you're in the Honors College, you'll have an Honors Advisor as well. We have an Advising Center on campus. So if it's more than one class, or even if it is just one class, that is also a really good resource for you to go to those individuals. Um, start the, making those relationships early on, meeting with those people so that when there is an issue, they, they know who you are, they know how to help you. And so that's a, a great resource for students. I would also encourage not only to go to your advisors and your professors when you're struggling, but try to do that before you're struggling, right? So what you don't want to do is wait until it's too late. Um, and then you've got to kind of make some really difficult decisions. So we've got a supplemental instruction program on campus. So um, a lot of the courses will have um, a weekly peer um, kind of a tutor, if you will, that would hold sessions for maybe problems or just reviewing the material. I encourage you to go to those start accessing those resources before you're you know you start doing poorly in the class and that'll just give you more options to kind of recover um, that that material for the semester very valuable advice there thank you so much that's um, wise to get started and build those relationships early and uh, to be aware of all of the different resources available on campus to help in just about every way that students could possibly have a need. Uh, let's go on to question six. Here at CFC, we offer research opportunities to all students, which is, by the way, something that does make us unique. Uh, can you tell us about one of your favorite research projects you worked on with your students? Um, Dr. Forsyth, would you like to lead us off with the response to this question? Sure. Um, yeah, I think undergraduate research is a huge part of the culture at CUC. It's something that we do really well, and it, not just in the sciences as well, but, you know, I think in other, other disciplines too. Um, so I'm a chemist, and part of my, like my research program as a faculty member involves undergraduate students so basically all my research students are undergraduates and i have five five students working in my lab this semester um and so i mean we're we're in there all the time right and we're social distanced and we're wearing masks and it's very safe um but um i've been so i've had a lot of really uh, great undergraduate research students uh, throughout the years i've been here um i think one of my favorite um like experiences that that I have with my students is being able to take them to professional conferences and meetings, right? And to so the stu our undergraduate students get to present their work, right? And they've done so at like regional American Chemical Society meetings. They've done so. Um, I've taken some of my undergraduate researchers to places like Georgia Tech, where we have science collaborators there, um, and um, we've done some really cool trips with the students and you know they get to really see what it's like to be a scientist and and part of you know communication whether it be presenting or writing like that's a really key part of being a scientist too right and it's not just being in the lab but our students get to do all of those things like they run their own experiments um but i guess for me i think it's really fun for me to see them present at conferences because it, you, it's like a full circle kind of thing. You really you see them start the project, you see them learn how to do things in the lab, and then you see them present their final results. And 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 in some you know in some cases these students are co-authors on like peer-reviewed scientific papers, right? So you know I've had I've had a number of undergraduate students who you know they're they're official co-authors on these papers, 
and you know these are things they can put on their their resumes when they're applying to medical school or graduate school or things like that and the, those actually make a big difference too and so you know I, I love being in the students within the lab with the students that's like one of my favorite things about being here um, but when I get to watch them present and like especially as you see that growth over the years that's like the best thing in my opinion <laughs> It is a privileged opportunity for our students to ha have the chance to work directly with professors on some of these projects and um, gain this experience and knowledge and expertise at the undergraduate level. They're not having to wait and um, be pulled into this as a master's or doctoral student. And instead, we really do engage our undergraduate students across all di disciplines within essentially every major on campus there are opportunities for research who else would like to speak better than i can on, on uh, this subject uh, i'm i'm super excited about research that we do in the department of teacher education and our research mostly uh deals with uh teaching and learning and finding new ways and new methodologies to see how children and adults learn. So my favorite uh, research projects uh, was with uh, the team of professors and students that we call the STEAM team. And STEAM is uh, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. So uh, every summer we would work uh, with an art camp on campus for children. And uh, we did projects that uh, deals with 3D printing, with combining math and music, with using stop motion animation and have students, for example, design musical compositions that have mathematical properties. That way they are uh, learning both music and mathematics and other subjects too. So I love uh, working with uh, student researchers and also expanding, I think it blows students' minds when they realize, oh, I'm going to become a teacher, but at the same time, I can be a researcher too. And every department does research and uh, to expand their, their horizons in terms of research is super exciting. Yeah, uh, I'd like to add, Lee, if that's OK. Please. Yeah, so my, um, you know, my research areas have been in the in uh, computational linguistics, AI, and robotics. So one of my favorite projects was a system a student and I wrote where we could talk to drones and uh, fly them around. And she went to Vienna, Austria, to present that at a research conference. And we paid for her to to go there. So it was a really cool combination of that research. But yeah, we have so many different. Um, projects for you to get engaged on. I saw uh, somebody put in the chat to, you know, when can a student get involved in research? Can they do it, uh, you know, uh, as freshmen or upperclassmen? And so we do events across campus to help our students get connected to our faculty and get them plugged into the research labs as soon as possible. Sometimes you can do that as a freshman. Sometimes it might be more sophomore or junior as you get some of that uh, prerequisite coursework under your belt. But uh, across campus, you know, we have some world class scholars here top in their field. And since we're primarily undergraduate institution as an undergraduate student, you get to work alongside uh, some of these really top folks in their field. Fun fact, uh, one of our professors here in the geology department uh, discovered the biggest T-Rex in the world. And if you're interested in paleontology, it's a really neat discipline uh, to take the coursework in and do some research and make discoveries. Uh, but anyway, so we have many things for you to choose from. Thank you, Dr. Mike Lee, Bernstein. Yes, yeah, please. I just chime in a little bit on um, how the college just generally supports undergraduate research and creative activities here at the college. So, um, you know, it's been mentioned a couple times that yes, any discipline, we've got scholarly work that our faculty are doing with students. And so it uh, doesn't matter if you're in the school of the arts, business, languages, sciences, whatever, education, you can you can have access to this. There is an Office of Undergraduate Research and Creative Activities on campus, 
And that particular office funds um, student uh, research projects with faculty. So they have a summer program called a SURF program. So summer undergraduate research with faculty program. Students across campus um, apply for these funds. And, and that particular grant is at about $6,500. You as a student get a $4,000 stipend to live here in Charleston. And then the rest of that money can go towards project cost or a faculty stipend. We also have um, project support throughout the academic year that you can apply for. And also there's support for the conferences that Dr. Forsyth was talking about. So we have what we call an RPG grant, so a research presentation grant. And students can apply for funds to support their travel to conferences all over the world. And so the college has made a commitment to this. There's also lots of money in the schools to support this. So I know that school science and math, in addition to these college-wide grants, has funds available for the students in his school. There's also similar types of programs in other schools across campus. And so there's not only the college-wide support, but also the individual school support. And all of these um, are great opportunities for our students, can lead to, um, you know, uh, papers, presentations um, that can help get you into graduate school or, or land you that first real job. But it also, um, they're a really good primer for access to nationally competitive awards. So one of the great things about the college is you can start doing that research early and a lot of um, nationally competitive awards such as Fulbright's and Goldwater's and, and Hollings research um, grants, those are awards that research is really the foundation. And so our students at the college have been very, very successful. We recently just got awarded three Goldwaters and three Hollings um, awards. So those are typically science-based and they just came out this month. But also we have been ranked as one of the top producers of Fulbright awards um, for many, many years. So all of these things kind of come together to really give you access to the opportunities um, that can lead to some wonderful success here at the College of Charleston. Thank you so much. I hope that everyone joining us today can, uh, this is getting fun and I hope you could appreciate and hear the enthusiasm of our faculty. And I'll say that this particular faculty panel really does represent our entire campus. Our, our professors are very interested and engaged in supporting students and um, encouraging their success. So um, we'll move on to question seven, but I, I just wanted to make note that uh, it, it is exciting to um, be able to interact with um, and, and absorb from faculty who are so enthusiastic and eager to assist our students in their education. So uh, for question seven, in terms of preparing students for a career after college, how do you recommend they prepare themselves and make the most of their time at college? Uh, Dean Van Delden, would you like to start us off with this one? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, you okay. know, when you go, when you go to um, uh, when you get to college, you got to be thinking, you know, college is the means to the end, right? To get you that awesome job afterwards or to go on to, to graduate school. So, of course, you got to go to class. You got to get A's and B's in all your classes. That's the minimum, right? That's what you have to do. But above and beyond that, you need to be connecting with, you know, Dr. Forsyth for a research opportunity in his lab or Dr. Nanad to get engaged in the research that's going on. All of those extracurricular academic activities, whether it's a, a undergraduate research opportunity or an internship or a shadowing opportunity, all are so very important to complement your education and prepare you for that next step in life. Uh, if, if you're interested in any kind of uh, pre-help profession, well, well, I, whether it's an allied health or uh, sectors or uh, pre-med or pre-dental or pre-pharma or, or whatever, uh, you really need to get engaged and some shadowing experiences with, you know, the big hospital system that's a couple blocks away here, MUSC or Roper St. Francis and or our EMS service that's run out to the College of Charleston here where you could be one of our EMTs uh, and helping with ambulance service that, that we service Charleston with. So there's many, many opportunities for, for you to get involved. And so all you got to do is want it and, and reach out and get engaged. And, and that'll be so very important to getting you ready uh, for, for when you're about to graduate. Very true. So who else would like to add to this question? 
I can add something, you know, yeah. just to, to build on what Dean Van Delden said, um, you know, like if, you know, for example, let's say that you wanted to be a medical doctor, right? What the best way to know if you want to be a medical doctor is to, to be around medical doctors, right? Like he said. And so, you know, I, I really encourage students to try, try things, you know, and see like what really catches your eye. Because, you know, sometimes it's not always what you thought it was going to be when you came, or sometimes it's exactly what you thought it was when you came, right? And so, um, but the best way to know is to try. And, you know, even if you have an, some experience, you know, some type of research experience or something like that, and, you know, you take a look at it and you say, you know, like that was fun, but maybe that's not what I want to do with my career. That's okay, right? But it's better to know sooner rather than later, right? You know, you, you'd rather find out now before then to apply to some program like graduate program and be two years in and then change your mind right and so um, I really think it's important to you know try stuff that interests you and when you find something that really like that really is like yeah this is what I want to do then run with it yeah thank you anyone recommend, else yeah I would recommend uh, to learn about your uh, department and learn about uh, your major and the uh, different programs that they may have. For example, there are different uh, leadership programs. I know that uh, uh, School of Education has a group of uh, students called teacher leaders, and we learn about uh, educational policy and uh, every August pre-pandemic, we would go to DC and talk to different uh, leaders in education, different think tanks and politicians and the Department of Education, etc. And I know that uh, communications and business have similar programs. So learn what's in your own department. Learn the structure of your department too. It's really helpful. Very good advice. Thank you. So we'll move on to question eight. Dean uh, Meyer Bernstein, would you like to lead us off? Gonna, as I read, you can be thinking about your uh, response. What other opportunities outside of class do you encourage students to get involved in? For example, a suggested minor, student organizations, internships, volunteer opportunities, competitions, et cetera, et cetera. Absolutely. So thanks, Lee. So we already talked a little bit about internships and research and those types of um, opportunities that are outside of the classroom, which are all um, excellent things to pursue. You can access those through your advisor or one of your professors. Sometimes you don't know how to get involved. And so talk to one of your professors and, and you know, in that department and, and, you know, they'll sit down with you and tell you kind of how it works. Um, the Career Center is a great opportunity as well to learn about some of these internships. Um, so in addition to that, I, I would encourage you to join some clubs, some student organizations. We have lots and lots of opportunities to, to engage in those types of opportunities. We, a, a, we have a cheese club at the College of Charleston, a barbecue club. I mean, there's fun stuff like that that you can do at the beginning of um, your fall semester when you come here. There'll be a whole fair on all types of clubs and organizations that you can get involved in. So I suggest, you know, you try a few of those out and, and see kind of where you find your people and your community. Um, eventually, you'll want to narrow things down and really kind of put more effort into a particular passion or one or two particular passions. Um, instead of like spreading yourself so thin. But I think at the beginning, it's good to try out a lot of different um, uh, different organizations and potential interests. Um, I would also really encourage you to think about whether or not you wanna study abroad. So we've got a wonderful Center for International Education here at the college. About 60% of our students study abroad. Um, and we have all different types of um, study abroad opportunities. So there's, you know, during spring break, there's during summer for May semester. you can go for a whole semester. We have affiliate programs. We have programs with our own faculty, programs for credit, programs for fun. I mean, the opportunities are endless. So, but you want to start thinking about those things early so that when you see those opportunities, you can take advantage of them. So I really encourage you to do that. 
Um, we have a Center for Civic Engagement on campus. So there's some volunteer opportunities through that center, but also if you join a club or a fraternity or sorority, um, there are typically going to be opportunities for volunteerism um, and that through those organizations as well. Um, with regards to minor, so that would be more of an academic opportunity. Um, a lot of our students here may double major or major and double minor. One of the great things about the College of Charleston is, you know, we're big enough that we offer some some wonderful diverse academic programs, but we're not so big that we're siloed. So we really encourage students to kind of cross pollinate, if you will, uh, maybe, you know, major in chemistry and minor in history or whatever it happens to be. And so when you graduate from here, you're gonna have a really unique education. You're not just gonna be a chemistry major, but you have the opportunity to really engage with the humanities and the arts and the social sciences to really make yourself a unique individual when you graduate from the College of Charleston. Thank you. All great suggestions and advice there. Who else would like to add to this question? Yeah, Lee, I would like to, I just, I agree 100% with what Dr. Meyer Bernstein said. You know, I, um, personally as a scientist, you know, I find that what really makes a lot of scientists really succeed in their career is actually their ability to communicate, their ability to write and to speak well and things like that. And I think it's super important that students really embrace the liberal arts when they're here, regardless if they're a humanities major or not, right? And um, and honestly, you know, when we look back at this past year, this past year has shown that even if you're not a science major, it's important to be science literate and understand what's going on, right? These things were really connected. and. Um, I think that's something that we do really, really well here. And, and that was one of the reasons why I wanted to work here is I think it's important that our students get a well-rounded education. And um, I just, I, I, I completely agree. And um, I really encourage the students to, you know, even outside their major, really explore, explore different fields and really um, just kind of dive in and into what interests you because you know, there's there's a whole there's a whole world of education, you know, and it's I think this is the time in your life to really embrace that. Yeah. Thank you. I also invite you to this is what uh, was mentioned uh, before, too, but I invite you to think of your community as also Charleston in the, the city that you live in and learn about different communities that live and different issues in the communities. And we have many organizations on campus that are uh, connected to different uh, citywide uh, organizations too. So uh, it's an, being a college student, it's an exciting time. And uh, think about how you're gonna change your own world, but also how you can become a, a person who is changing the world around you too. I think that's very important too. All very good points. Thank you all. So we're going to move on to question nine, which is our final question of this faculty panel. And uh, I'll, I'm going to ask everyone to chime in on this question because I definitely feel like it's an important one. What is your favorite part of teaching at the College of Charleston and why? And uh, Dr. Radakovic, you just uh, wrapped up the last question for us, and I'll ask you to lead off this question as well. Well, okay. great. I'm just super excited uh, that I work at a college where I know my students by their first name. I think uh, Dr. Van Delden mentioned that. And uh, not only did I know them while they're in class, but they uh, typically stay in touch. So I know, uh, I hear from them when they are uh, student teaching because that's the field I am in and later on they send me an email uh, when they are teachers and they say Dr. Radakovich I uh, uh, did this math trail that you did with us I did this with my students so that's the, the connections I make with my students that's the best part of teaching here. Thank you who, who else is next? 
OK, I'm putting you all on the spot now. Dr. Forsythe, what, what, what do you think about this question? What is your favorite part of teaching at the College of Charleston and why? Yeah, well, I I mean, I obviously I echo with um, with what Nanad said. I, you know, just interacting with the students is 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 awesome and kind of related to that is watching their growth over their time on campus. Right. Yeah. You, know, you know, this is true for traditional you know, students who are here for when they're 18 to 22. This is true for non-traditional students as well. Um, and, you know, like seeing their, seeing these wide-eyed students starting out, you know, and then watching them leave and graduate. And they're, I mean, they're, they're professionals, you know, they're ready to go and take on the world. And I, I that, that's such a special privilege to be a part of, you know, like, like I think, I think for a lot of us who are in education, you know, we we love to learn, and like college was a really formative time in our life, and to be part of that experience for the students over and over and over again, you know, that it's so rewarding, and it it's really hard. Honestly, it's hard to put into words how special that is. Yeah. I think that's a really good point, and um, and it's such a big question because. Uh, it's not just why do you love teaching and what is your favorite part of teaching, but what's so valuable for you about teaching at the College of Charleston and the culture that we have here um, that uh, is a big part of how we feel about this answer. Uh, go ahead. Who is yeah. going to speak? Maybe I could go next and then Please. Dr. Maya Bernstein can have the grand finale. Uh, you know, I would just, it's, it's again, just to echo everything that Ad and Jay said, uh, of course, I feel exactly the same. To add maybe something new, you know, one of the great things about being a teacher here at the College of Charleston is location, location, location. You know, uh, we're a big believer in experiential learning, which includes uh, internships and getting you engaged with all the companies and industries and research organizations in Charleston. There's, no matter what your major is, there's something for you to get engaged in in Charleston beyond the typical, the academics from inside a classroom. And so for somebody like me, I love helping our students connect to these opportunities here in the community. And so so that's a, also a great thing about being a teacher here at the College of Charleston. And in Charleston, if you haven't visited yet, it's not a terrible place to live, work, and play. You know, I, I grew up in the Caribbean on a small Caribbean island. I've lived in a few different places in America and to uh, end up here with my family in Charleston. It's really, uh, we, we really lucked out. And, and so over to you, Dr. Maya Bursting. All right, thanks. Well, first of all, I echo all of my colleagues. You can, you can tell there's a, a running theme here and we all love working with the students and, and that is one of the best things about being here. Um, I also I also want to talk about the community of faculty. So, you know, you've got four of us here um, this morning talking with you, but um, I love that, you know, all of the faculty are all in and the administration as well, that this is really a student centered institution and we really focus on the undergraduate. So I think that our jobs wouldn't be as fun and exciting if the four of us were the only ones doing it, right? But it's not. All of our colleagues, all of the faculty on campus, they all feel the same way that we do. And so you will get to know um, your professors, whether it's, you know, Dr. Forsyth or someone you haven't met yet. You will be um, get to know them on a first name basis. They will be there for you. They will support you. They will be able to do all the things that we've talked about today. And so you will really be coming into a community with hundreds of faculty um, supporting you and and your journey, and so that's what's that's what's also very rewarding is that we're doing this as a, as a community to support you. It's all very true. Thank you to each of you. We're so fortunate to have each of you join us this morning. We appreciate you taking time out of your busy Saturdays and. Uh, busy lives to um, be a part of this and to help share the College of Charleston story with so many others. So at this time, I'm going to turn it back over to Devin and thank you again to our faculty panel. Thank you, Lee, and thank you again to our faculty panelists. Uh, this has been a great amount of information for our students and families joining in. Um, and on that note, uh, we are now going to take some time to go over your next steps towards enrollment. Uh, we, again, we know that some of you 
have not quite made um, those next steps yet. And we have our assistant director for admissions, Hannah Frallinger, with us this morning um, to go through those next steps with you quickly. Again, if you have any questions about um, whether information that was just covered in the faculty panel or what Hannah is about to present, you may always drop that in the chat. We have um, admissions counselors monitoring it live uh, to get back to you. All right, Hannah, let's get started. Thank you so much, Devin. Um, like Devin said, my name is Hannah Frallinger and I work in the Office of Admissions. Um, also an alum of the college. I graduated about five years ago um, in the education department. Um, and so I'm just going to talk about some of your next steps now that you have been admitted. You're kind of wondering what do my next steps look like? What do I need to do to secure my time here in Charleston in the fall in the next four years? Um, so these are some of your next steps that you're going to want to start looking at. Um, the, the main thing that you're going to want to do next is confirm your enrollment and that's by paying your non-refundable $400 deposit and then from there you kind of get the ball rolling with setting up your college email, registering for orientation, applying for housing, sending final transcripts once you graduate, uh, credit evaluation, things like that. Uh, if we can go to the next slide for me. The main thing that you're going to be able to set up to do all of this is setting up your My Charleston account. And so typically um, when you've been accepted, you have um, uh, been using your admissions portal for everything. And now that you've been accepted and admitted in your admissions portal goes over how to set up your My Charleston account. And all of that information is in your portal, um, your login credentials and things like that to set up your My Charleston account. And you're pretty much from here on out going to be doing everything through this account. Um, if you have any questions at all or if you're having trouble setting up your My Charleston account, um, we are always here in the admissions office here to help you set that up. Uh, hopefully one of my colleagues in the chat has put in the link to the meet your counselor so you can find out who your counselor is um, so you can reach out to them directly to ask any questions that you might have. Um, they're broken up for South Carolina students. They're broken up by um, uh, counties and then they're also for out of state students broken up by different territories, different states. Um, so definitely check that out and reach out to your counselor if you do have any information about setting this up or any questions going forward um, involving next steps. You can go to the next slide, please. Um, so this is how you're going to pay your deposit. It's going to be through your My Charleston account. Um, you're going to log in once you get everything set up. You're going to go to the My Accounts tab and you'll find eBill and in your eBill is where you're going to be able to pay your deposit. Uh, and then once you to pay your deposit, that's kind of how everything gets started. You'll get information on setting up your um, Gmail account, your Cmail account. Um, once you pay that deposit, you'll get information emailed to you on setting that up. And so definitely want to start checking that regularly um, to make because you're going to get a lot of information going forward in your call to Charleston email. Um, it's where you'll be able to sign up for housing and things like that. So paying your deposit will be through your My Charleston account under the My Accounts tab. Next slide. Um, so once you do that, after you pay your deposit, you're going to wait 24 hours and after 24 hours, that's when you're going to get access to the housing portal. The housing portal is also in your My Charleston account. If you've viewed it at the top kind of right area there, you'll see a button for housing and dining. That's where you're going to go in and be able to fill out the housing application. It is a $50 housing application fee, but that's where you're going to be able to fill that out, complete it. And then also sign up for any meal plan. Um, if you're a freshman living on campus, you will be required to sign up for a meal plan, but it's great. Dining halls are really great. Um, a lot of options for you on campus, um, so you will be well fed. But um, I definitely encourage you to go on our website and look up the residence halls on our campus. If you've recently done a tour or in the future going to come for a tour, we are unfortunately unable to show you residence halls due to COVID restrictions. So I always encourage students to um, go on our website website. If you just Google CFC residence halls, there's a whole list of them, a pricing breakdown per semester, and then um, you'll be able to click on them and you'll see a nice 3D kind of layout of the residence halls just to kind of give you an idea of the layouts and what they look like, sizing, all of that. And then if you go on CFC's YouTube channel as well, um, they do a nice uh, 360 view of the residence halls as well. So it kind of give you an idea of some of the options for you. And then like I said, all the pricing is there as well. Some of them are more expensive than others, um, so you're able to see that. Uh, in terms of roommates, you have a couple options with roommates. Um, if you meet someone or know someone, maybe you met someone over social media that you think would be a good fit for you, 
you can request each other as roommates, or if you know someone that you want to room with, you can request each other. Um, you can do a completely random roommate, which is actually what I did my freshman year, and it turned out really well. Um, or you can um, kind of fill out like a survey. What time do you wake up? What time do you go to bed? How, like kind of how your living arrangements are set up. And then they, housing tries to match you up with people most similar to you. Um, based off of your answers and they'll give you their contact information so you're able to reach out to them to see if you might be a good fit um, as a roommate. So a couple options there for you, but if you have any questions at all, um, you can reach out to us or you can reach out to the housing office as well and they'll be able to answer any questions for you. Next slide, please. Um, the next thing, once you graduate from high school, you're going to want to send us your final high school transcript. Um, once that is finalized with your graduation date listed, we will need that to process for you. Um, definitely do that sooner rather than later. You don't want it to get to August and have some issues come up because we still haven't gotten your final transcript. But as soon as you graduate, I will get, definitely start with that, as well as any um, dual enrollment classes you might be having at um, different colleges locally. You want to send those those transcripts as well. Next slide, please. And like I said, yes, dual enrollment. If you're taking any AP class, uh, credits, um, AP tests, and you get the scores back for those, definitely send us those. IB um, classes as well. We will get all of those evaluated for you. If you are curious about uh, dual enrollment classes and how they will transfer, we do have a transfer database under our Transfer Resource Center, and you can go under there and select the college you're currently taking classes from. And it, it, in our system, you'll be able to see ahead of time kind of what that class will transfer over as. Um, but if yeah, if you just Google CFC transfer database, that will pop up, and so you can kind of see ahead of time what those classes you're currently taking uh, will come into CFC as question that. Yep. And then finally, um, you're going to want to sign up for orientation. This says open soon. Stay tuned. But I believe orientation registration is open on your My Charleston account. So you can go in and sign up for orientation. Just know orientation um, this summer is virtual, but this is kind of our last virtual piece um, so that we can have a very smooth transition to a fully on campus uh, environment in the fall. So orientation will be virtual. Again, these dates are open. They are live on your My Charleston account to sign up for. Um, this is when you will meet your academic advisor. They you will sign up for classes, all that. So there's a lot of options over the summer for you to sign up for, but this will be your last virtual um, piece before the fall. Next slide. And that's all I have for you guys. Again, if you have any questions at all throughout this process, I know it can be a lot and a little bit overwhelming, and we are help, happy to help in any way that we can here at the admissions office and other offices on campus. But hopefully we'll be able to see you in the fall. And thank you guys so much. And I'm going to turn it back over to Devin. Thank you, Hannah. A lot of great information there. Uh, just a reminder, and I'm going to drop this link in the chat now as well. Um, but if you have any specific questions about housing, um, the system that we use for you to find your roommate and get that assignment. Um, housing actually presented a presentation on April 1st um, called Find Your Best Roommate, and that was recorded. So I just dropped that YouTube link in the chat if you'd like to review it. Um, and of course, you can always reach out to our office or housing directly if you have any questions. Uh, we're here to help you. All right, well, uh, last but not least, we now have um, a fantastic current student, student panel lined up for you all. Um, we know how exciting it is to hear from current students, um, particularly as you're about to start your own college uh, process and, and journey. So before we get started with the live student panel discussion, we have a quick video we're going to show you um, and then we'll get started. There's so much going on in Charleston in the best way that it's hard to not find something to really identify with. There are hundreds of clubs that you can join here at the College of Charleston. Some of the ones that I'm involved in include the Shotland Scholars Program, CFC Dance Alliance. I am in a sorority and there are so many ways to get involved and make friends here. There are internships, fellowships, shadowing opportunities, jobs, you name it, Charleston has all these things. It's just beautiful everywhere, and you're always wanting to be outside. So, I mean, if you want to be your own person, but also have a community, Charleston's the place to be. Thank you. All right, you heard it there first. Charleston's the place to be. I'm now going to introduce you all to uh, 
Associate Director Fred Quick. He is going to moderate our uh, student panel this morning. So Fred, I'm going to hand it over to you. Perfect, perfect. And good morning, future Cougars and families. Um, as Devin said, you've had the privilege of listening to our faculty. You've heard what your what your next steps are. Now let's hear from some students who have been in your same position and made the great decision that you have the opportunity to make soon as well. So my name is Fred Quick. Um, as Devin said, I'm Associate Director for Admissions here at the college. I'm also an alum. Um, and so it's going to be great to hear from these students who are doing great things across campus. So really quick, I have Charlie Havens, Destiny Hawkins, Katie Hill, Caitlin Jeter, Rachel Williams, and Shai King, who are here to share some of their amazing experiences on campus, but also to answer questions for you as well. So what I'm going to do is actually start this off with a question to Shai in which I ask, what do you love most about the College of Charleston? Hi everyone, uh, just again, my name is Shai. And one thing that I really love about the College of Charleston is that I've had the opportunity to explore just about any and everything that I'm interested in. I'm definitely someone who has a lot of different interests that don't necessarily line up with what I wanted to major in. And just being able to get involved in lots of different student groups on campus was a great way for me to sort of explore other passions of mine that I wasn't interested in majoring or minoring in. I also just really enjoy that we're in the middle of the city because I'm definitely someone who likes to explore and I'm a really big fan of like just going out and trying like new foods and different things like that. So being like a few steps from King Street was always one of my favorite things about the college. Perfect, thank you Shai and obviously the beautiful location of Charleston. Uh, does have its advantages, uh, but moving to our second question, and we will give space for our students uh, to chime in on all of these, but uh, moving to our second question, uh, can you talk about the opportunities students have to get involved and make a difference on the campus and or within the city of Charleston as well? Hey, so I'm Destiny Hawkins, a senior here at the college, majoring in political science with concentration in politics, policy and law, minoring in English from both Rochester, New York and Greenville, South Carolina. And there is literally like, not to be cliche, but an endless amount of opportunities that you can um, get involved with the campus. You can like, whether it's work-wise or organization-wise or off-campus work, there's always something you do. If you wanna like work-wise, you can go to the Career Center and you like, or download Handshake, which is our, database that we use to like mainly get jobs, especially within like the Charleston community. And they have jobs posted for on campus as well as off campus, um, different distances. Um, as far as organizations, one of our faculty earlier actually talked about how each year at the beginning of the semester, we do have an organization fair. We have over 206 organizations on campus. Um, so really endless amount of, well, 206 is a stopping number, but if like there's anything you can get involved with, with those and if you find that there's nothing that you like, you and nine others plus a faculty can get together, write down a constitution, and if it's unlike any other on campus, boom, you have your own organization. So it's countless amount of ways to get involved on or off campus. And with us being in the city, everything is really walking distance, especially downtown. So if you want to get involved off campus, there's that. Perfect, perfect. And now we're going to um move to our third question, which is how accessible are professors outside of the office hours? What if I need help from other offices on campus? Are they flexible with student schedules? Cool, so I will actually also be taking this question. Um, so another great thing is that professors are required to have office hours, but if for some reason those office hours don't necessarily line up with your schedule, like say you always have class during their scheduled office hours, I found that professors are really great at working with you to find the time that works for both of you. Usually if you just like send them a quick email saying, hey, I'd like to meet with you, but your office hours don't really work with my schedule, they're really great about meeting you where you are and trying to find a time that works for you. Um, and as far as our offices on campus, they are usually open like normal business hours, so like eight to five. So you can always contact someone in the department 
through email and they'll get back to you as soon as they can. All our offices on campus, you're welcome to walk into when we're operating under normal campus guidelines. You can just walk into the office and they'll be there to help you. But if for some reason it's after hours and you have a question and maybe you don't necessarily have time to wait for someone to email you back, they're also really great about having resources on their websites that can answer just about any question that you could possibly have. Perfect. Thank you so much. Shai. I love questions like this because it kind of echoes the sentiment that was shared earlier when Dean Van Delden said that he gets bored in his office hours and he loves when students come by to see that they're also flexible outside of that um, and having echoed by a student is always great. Uh, moving to our fourth question, we're going to hear from Katie and Charlie on this next one, which asks, what has been your favorite class at CFC so far and why? So hi, I'm Katie. I'm a graduating senior and I study political science and public health with a minor in international studies. Um, and my favorite class, this is a really hard question because there's been so many great ones, but last semester I got to take a class. Um, it was like a special topics English class on African autobiographies. And it was really interesting because we got to look at the connections between the people that we were reading about and there was actually a lot of links to the Charleston area, so it's interesting to see that kind of cross Atlantic connection that we were able to make. And I never really thought that that was something that I'd be learning about when I signed up to come to CFC, but it was a really incredible experience. Awesome, awesome. And Charlie? Hi, I'm Charlie. I'm also a graduating senior and I'm a communications major and marketing minor. And the, my favorite class I've taken so far, I'm actually currently in, and it's my capstone. So as a comm major, you can choose between either doing a bachelor's essay or you can do a capstone, which is a full year course that kind of is the culmination of everything you've learned. And so one of the best things about it is that there are so many different options for which capstone you want to take. And so the one I'm in is led by Dr. Goodyear, and it's a leadership um, capstone. And it's been really great because I've learned so much and it's very applicable to the real world and I can see how I'll be using what I'm learning in real life. And also it's this class in particular is really great because it does a lot of development in terms of working on your resume and working on interview skills, which is so great, especially as a graduating senior. I'm using that this, what I'm learning in class every single day, but also what I really like about it. And there are a couple as a comm major. There's one other um, full year course as well. And what I really like about it is in those courses, you are with the same people the entire year. And so you become really close, especially at a school like College of Charleston, where the classes are pretty small. It's my capstone is 15 people, including myself. And so you get to really know the people in your class and get close with them, both on like a personal level and in terms of collaborating on work and assignments and whatnot. And so I really like that environment that's created. Perfect, perfect. All right, so we've been hearing from a couple seniors, but let's see if they can think back to their first year on campus as this is what you guys have in common as well with question five. What is it like to be a freshman or first year student at the College of Charleston? Hi everyone, my name is Rachel. I am a sophomore here at the college from Walterboro, South Carolina, majoring in psychology with a minor in African American studies. And being a freshman here at the College of Charleston is really amazing. You know, that first year you have the opportunity to really uh, explore a lot of clubs and organizations and different fields to really find your focus and what you love. And like the years following, you can really like support those things when you go forward. So um, if you ever get homesick or anything like that, you have tons of faculty and staff and students here on campus to really help you with that journey throughout your first year. I would also like to chime in on this question just because it was my um, first year here, especially my first week was an extremely crazy one. So came from a really small town, really sheltered, coming into a city and like, boom, I was just kind of there by myself physically, didn't really come in with anybody else. And that first week, my mom almost blocked my number because I called her like at least three times a day asking her help for every little thing. And but what that made me do is realize like it's time to be independent. So that first week was an extremely growing period for me and my freshman year, um, extremely shy. I didn't do anything until my sophomore year outside of classes. But I will say there were so many opportunities that were out there, some that I knew about, some that I didn't, that definitely would have helped. Um, but it's 
also exciting. Like you get your first taste of individuality and independence. And that like that entire first year, I can say for most freshmen, I hope will be a growing experience with like understanding how to do things on your own, how life works and like starting to come into your own. Oh, perfect, perfect. Now going into our next question, what is school spirit like at the College of Charleston, especially since there's not a football team? And I'll also take this one. So our school spirit is typically pretty high, um, football team or not. So in place of a football team, um, where like that most other schools, that's where the spirit goes to, our basketball team actually is like, <laughs> is the sport for like extreme school spirit. It's right here on campus. You can walk through it. You can free. There's so many giveaways. You have our Cougarettes, which are our school dance team and our cheerleaders right beside cheering the teams on. Their little things that we get um, just like for fun, like they'll hand out a big brick. There's a brick that we get sometimes and you just like pass it throughout the crowd. It's um, we have our own little chant and that's just the basketball games. With, other than that, we have like Maroon Mondays where you get a t-shirt and some snacks, some nice other swag about CFC. And hopefully we can get back to having this thing called George Street Blowout, which we block the street um, in between the admissions office and the sister in yard, which is right across from each other. And the sister in yard, you know, has like rich history. If you've ever like literally looked into the college, that'll be the main picture that you see. And um, we introduced the football team and our players. We have a DJ food and just events. I remember one year they had a rock climbing wall. They had carnival games. It was just amazing. So our school spirit is never dead. It's always there. So a football team really doesn't make the school. It's really about like your pride in your school. And many people who do come here have like that extreme cougar pride that like will always remain. Perfect, perfect. Thank you, Destiny. And also just to add to that school spirit, um, our cheerleading squad actually just won a national championship uh, for cheer just a couple weeks ago. So speaking of school spirit, our spirit leaders <laughs> nationally are killing it. Uh, so going into our next question, what is your favorite spot on campus and why? Uh, hi everyone, this is Shai again. Um, and I also realized that I never really introduced myself. So before I answer this question, I just want to let y'all know that I am a senior here at College of Charleston. I'll be graduating in December. I'm majoring in psychology with a minor in healthcare and medical services management. And with that being said, my favorite spot on campus is the courtyard behind our science and mathematics building. I really enjoy it because it's a beautiful green space, but it's also sort of like a hidden gem in terms of the green spaces that we have on campus. I feel like a lot of people don't really know that it's there simply just because of where it is. And oftentimes, if you're not a student who has a lot of classes in SSMB, then you don't really think to go there. But it's nice and sort of like enclosed the way that the building is around it. It's a nice little like picnic area. It's Wi-Fi accessible, just like the rest of our great spaces. And I really enjoy going there to study or even just to enjoy the outdoors. I love it. I love it. And before we move on, I would like to open this up to our other panelists if they have any other places on campus that uh, stand out to them as well, especially since they're taking their graduation pictures. There has to be a few places that uh, that that's keep memories. Um, I'll say it's I have lots of places on campus that I love. Some of them are just in buildings, but I do want to add there's this one hidden gem that I kind of fell in love with recently. Thanks to Mr. Quick, actually, he's the one who told me about it. Um, the president's house courtyard, it's in the um, it's right beside and behind the actual president's house. And I didn't know that like students were allowed to go over there, but it has a fountain and then it also has this seating area that's really like really in the cut really secluded and it's it's just an amazing like just, I sat there for a while after I was told about it and it just has a nice feel to it so I'd say definitely check that out um, before you leave it. All right perfect perfect and I don't know if it can stay a secret spot if you tell everyone Destiny <laughs> but going into our next question how was the food on campus? 
And do students eat mostly on or off campus? So um, the food on campus is good. There's a lot of options, which is really great because there's um, multiple. This is if you're eating on campus. Um, there are multiple different dining options for if you have depending on your meal plan. So there's one right um, underneath Barry and right by McAllister, and there's also one um, underneath Liberty. So depending on where your dorm is, there's always one that's close to you. And then there's also other options, including Marty's Place, which has vegetarian options, which is great. Um, and then in terms of do students eat mostly on campus or off, I'd say it's a mix. Um, typically, freshman year, people will get the full meal plan. And then a lot of people sophomore year will do the off-campus meal plan, especially if you live close to campus, which is really great because you can go to a lot of restaurants near um, campus. So getting food after class or whatever, um, it's really easy and makes it super accessible. And then I would say oftentimes when people get older, they tend to not have the meal plan, although it's such a great option that plenty of people still do. Um, but at freshman year, I would say that pretty much everyone does do the meal plan. Perfect. Thank you, Charlie. Um, moving to our next question. Do most students join Greek life on campus? Are there other things to get involved with if you choose not to go Greek or to join a sorority or fraternity? I will also be taking this question. So um, CFC's Greek percentage is no more than like a little over 30, if I'm not mistaken. So like by that um, stat, and you can definitely double check me, but CFC by far is not a go Greek or go home campus. Um, we do have several sororities and fraternities. We have, of course, IFC, Panhellenic, and NPHC, as well as cultural and academic um, and honors. Um, Greek organizations. However, that does not make your student experience. That does not make the campus at all. I am a part of two of these, but I didn't join these until fairly recently. So I went through two and a half years without it. And I'd say like it, other than like what you do with the organization, it doesn't make a difference on um, your campus life, the campus feel as a whole of like everything on the campus really stays the same. Um, your friend wise, there's like no really click things. Um, and if you do want to get involved, most definitely go forth with it. But if you do not, that's once again, equally perfectly OK. Um, there's other organizations, as um, we mentioned, as well as um, as the professors once again mentioned, if you want to get involved academically, then you can help them with their research projects. Or you can go study abroad or you can just message one friend um, one person for your class and just trying to get that friend feeling and boom you just started a friend group so there's so many other ways to get involved with campus even with getting the job on campus than um fraternity and sorority but definitely fraternity and sorority life still is present if you like perfect destiny and what a great perspective to share of being non-greek for two and a half years and then actually having the option to go greek uh, that is a great um, a great bit of information to share. Now, moving on to another question. Uh, we heard earlier in the faculty panel that there's a cheese club and a barbecue club on campus. But Katie, I want to know what are some of the most unique clubs at the College of Charleston? Well, I think that the cheese club and the barbecue club definitely take the cake for that one. But there are so many unique clubs on campus. There's a club for just about anything you could be interested in. There's a club for like every language you could learn at CFC. Um, I tried out the Quidditch club when I first started on campus for a week or two, so that's a pretty unique one. Um, there's a rock climbing club, there's badminton clubs, there's just about every club that you could look for. Um, and again, like if there's not something specific that you find that you're interested in, you can always start your own club. So there's always the potential for more unique clubs as well. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much, Katie. Now, this next question, I'm going to open it to the panel. Um, uh, a lot of discussions that we've had on campus have been regarding campus climate, uh, different things that promote diversity and inclusion. And so with this, the question I want to ask is, do you feel the College of Charleston's student body and campus culture promotes inclusivity and diversity? And if so, how so? I can start with this one. Um, so the, my ultimate answer is 
Yes, and it can still be improved. And that's just because everything in life, um, though it works, it can still get better. Um, how they promote inclusivity, inclusivity, excuse me, and diversity is for one, if I'm not mistaken, they still do those trainings in your first year experience, your seminar class, um, you have to take those as well as if you go, we also have, excuse me, um, one of our standards are like no discrimination over anything. And if you are found in violation of that, you do get punished um, by the honor board and President Chu, which I like am extremely grateful for. If anything happens on campus, he is quick to be the first to like say this is not OK. This is not what we represent and this will be handled appropriately versus letting it slide or kind of brushing it under the rug. Like our situations get taken extremely seriously. And I'd say like during my time here, like if you know the history of downtown Charleston, you know how like intense it can be, but our campus and our president, most importantly, like do a really good job of making sure our students, especially our students of color, and being a student of color, like certain things have affected me, and they do a great job of making sure we aren't hurt by anybody else's insensitivity or anybody else's beliefs that are not right and not okay. Oh, excuse me. I also want to add. I'm sorry. We do have several clubs um, for any like we have Black Student Union, United African Students, Asian Student Association, um, clubs for anybody in the LGBTQ plus community, as well as advisors in um, campus, excuse me what they're called, campus buildings, campus um, complete groups that look over, especially our uh, multicultural um, organization on campus. They're actually faculty led. They make sure that everybody, minority or not, is treated like a person because we are people. So just wanted to add that in there. And we have safe zone, a safe zone training. <laughs> so. Destiny, it seems like you covered it all. I appreciate that. If any other panelists uh, want to chime in, you have the floor to do so as well. And we can move to our next question which is what is the best way to meet people and make friends as a new student at the College of Charleston? Hi everyone, it's Rachel. So um, there are various ways to make friends here at the College of Charleston. You have Res Life uh, programs, which are usually programs hosted by your RA in your dorm. Um, there's also the club organization fair where you can go there and join as many clubs as you would like that fits in your schedule that you can work with. Um, I know CAP hosts a lot of events. They have like bingo night and things like that. Uh, you can also like in a class, you can reach out to your classmates, start a study group, and there's a possibility of a friendship blooming there. There's also the rec center we have here on College of Charleston campus, and you can join any intramural sport team. So we have badminton, volleyball, ping pong, dodgeball. They do fishing on Fridays. So those are always really great places and ways to go to find friends here at CFC. Perfect. And Charlie? Yeah, um, first off, to reiterate something that Rachel said, I have made the majority of my friends through my classes. Like, honestly, it sounds weird, but you end up just becoming really close with the people in your classes, which is one of the really big advantages of having such small classes. And so that's a really great way to make friends. And you definitely shouldn't be afraid to reach out to people in your class, whether it's just looking for someone to study with or looking for help with a question you might have. I really like have made a lot of friends through that and it's been really awesome especially because as you go on in your major you end up having classes with a lot of the same people so you get really close with the people that you end up having classes over and over again with also um to i know we touched on it a little bit earlier but absolutely not something you have to do but i will say like i'm in a fraternity and greek life's a great way to make friends i've made some of my best friends i some of my best friends to this day are people i met the first week of school through recruitment so i would really recommend at least trying because even if you don't end up staying in it, you end up, or it, it, sorry, even if it's not for you in the end, you end up making a lot of friends along the way. So it's definitely a great way to start making friends at College of Charleston. Sorry, I can't talk right now. <laughs> that is fine, Charlie. Thank you so much. Uh, moving to our next question. Are students able to work while at college? The most work on or off campus is a hard to balance work with your coursework and other activities and responsibilities? 
I can start on this one. So first and foremost, before you even start looking for a job, you should definitely make sure that you have a good handle on your coursework and on your time management, just because you don't want to get into something and now it's more than you can, um, you bit off more than you can chew because like it's hard for you to balance since you didn't already have that balance in school comes first, you're a student before you're an employee and on campus employers make sure you know that they reiterate it almost every time because your grades come first year into co you're in college to graduate um, getting a job is definitely necessary to some people at some point but for the most part you're like at the institution to get that degree and you don't want to um, put work first and now like you're struggling for schoolwork but it is very easy to find a job um I'd recommend an on-campus job versus an off-campus job I've had both um, several times throughout my college career and the on-campus jobs, most offices for one, close around five o'clock unless you're with Res Life, but even then they close at a reasonable time. And whereas off-campus jobs, especially right here on King, they usually close later. And sometimes like you are required to open at 7 a.m., to close at midnight, to work like these really late and in between shifts and like not all employers care that you're in a student off campus versus the ones on campus who know that you're a student before anything else. Um, so as far as balance, that's really on you to make sure you have that time management skills because it's really not hard to balance it as long as you like when you do go apply and when you do like talk to your employees, you let them know, hey, this is my schedule. And I also like to set this side of time for me to study. And if like a big exam's coming up, you say, hey, is it okay if I like not come in on XYZ days so I can make sure I pass this test coming up and making sure like you understand like your priorities and like organize it in that way in advance versus like last minute. And it'll be a breeze for you to work on campus or off campus to work in general. All yeah. right. I can add to that um, as well because I've held to on campus jobs during my time here. And I definitely think that, like Destiny said, it's about time management first and foremost, but um, it's certainly not the most difficult thing in the world to balance work and school at the same time. And um, if you are looking for a job, we have an awesome career center on campus and they can help you write up your resume, write a cover letter, do everything you need to do all the way up to like doing a mock interview to prepare for the job. So there's certainly people on campus who are here and ready to help you find that job when it comes time for you to look for it, whether it's during your time in college or afterwards. But it's certainly it's certainly doable and it's certainly something to look into if that's what you're interested in. Perfect. Thank you, Katie and Destiny. Um, now going into our next question. What are resource what resources are available at the College of Charleston to help students succeed? <clears throat> Hi, it's Shai again. I'll be taking this question. So in an academic sense, there are a lot of ways that students can feel supported at College of Charleston. We have our Center for Student Learning, which is our free tutoring service offered to you as a student here. And all of the tutors are students, so they have passed the class that you're in and they're usually a few levels above you, so they know exactly sort of what you need to know and how to apply it. We have other offices on campus like our Center for Academic Performance and Persistence if you're ever running into any issues or anything like that. And then outside of an academic sense, because at College Charleston, we care about you as more than just a student, but also as a person. We have our counseling center. So if you're facing like some issues or you just really want someone to talk to, that's a great place to go. Um, if you're looking to stay healthy, we have our student health services on campus as well. And if you ever find that you're having issues with anything else, our Dean of Students office is a great place to start, and they're also really good at just making sure that you're getting all the resources that you need either on or off campus to help you succeed. Perfect. Thank you so much, Shai. And now we have another question asking, what's one thing you might change about the College of Charleston? What's, thing you would what's one thing you would never want to change about the college? So I can take this one. Um, the first one thing I might change about CFC is really hard because there's honestly not much that I would change. Um, I think one thing that I would love to see is a little bit more like access to information about what other students are achieving and what they're involved in off campus because so many students are doing so many great things 
And personally, I'd love to hear like more about what everyone else is doing, what my peers are doing, because everyone is doing incredible work on and off campus. So I think that's a great thing to kind of promote within the institution. Um, but one thing I would never want to change about the college is the focus on like liberal arts and interdisciplinary studies, because like even though I study political science and public health, I've been able to take like dance classes and Russian classes and there's sailing classes, there's kayaking, ice skating, there's all kinds of anthropology classes that you can take. There's everything that you could ever possibly be interested in. So that's something that I think is so important and that should never change about CFC. Perfect. Thank you so much, Katie. Now, our next question asks, do you feel safe on campus? I will take that one. And yes, I feel safe on campus mainly because um, CC does a lot to make sure that you are because when you're on campus, you're in their control. You're kind of like the college's baby. So you wouldn't want your baby to get hurt, would you? No. They have several um, call boxes all around campus. I want to say on every block or mostly on every block, always like not so far from one another. If anything happens, you just press it, boom, calls public safety, and you get to tell them like what's happening, what's going on. They say they bring the office to you immediately. And um, they do rounds at day, during like the day. At night, what they do is on certain streets, especially the ones that are slightly like leading off more so into the city, they'll have like cars stationed there, just making sure if anything's if everything's fine, if anything does happen, like they're split second away. They also have several reporting systems if you do like see strange activity or anything of that nature where you can just go ahead and put it that way. They'll put an, an announcement out through this alert system, make sure the whole campus knows if anything um, serious were to happen. They also have our Cougar alert system that alerts everybody in. Um, so all the students and if any student has a parent or guardian that they have on that list, they also like send the email and calls to them, let them know what's going on and like continue to give them updates. They don't just say one thing and leave it. They give updates. So definitely feel safe on campus because they have those measures put in place. Perfect. Thank you, Destiny, because we are all the campus's babies and you wouldn't want anything bad to happen to the campus's babies. Um, our next question, and as we kind of approach one of the College of Charleston's greatest traditions, uh, we want to know what are some of your favorite CUC traditions? I'll also start with this one, but there's so many. So if anybody after me has some, definitely chime in. Um, but I'm going to start with being a freshman. When you come in, we have this thing called convocation. Um, so over the summer for orientation, you will receive a book. The book is to be like read um, before coming in. And then when you actually do come in, you get into this like, place in the classroom with some more freshmen, kind of talk about the book, write about the book a bit. And right afterwards, you go to George Street, which is right across from the cistern yard. And you sign a book, like basically marking your claim on the campus, like I am here, I am now CFC. And you walk in under this art called Porter's Lodge into the cistern yard and you like go through the ceremony and it ends with singing um, our campus song, our college song. And that's like my favorite. That's like your entrance way. And, and it concludes with graduation. You're on the cistern yard. You walk across the cistern and you walk out of Porter Lodge, which signifies your um, whole journey coming to an end. You completed the journey. Um, another one is not walking across the cistern. Um, I'm not sure if it's more of a tradition or <laughs> stereotype. I mean, not stereotype, excuse me, or sorry, can't get the word out, but yeah, superstition. And you, it's said that if you walk across the cistern before graduation, it adds on another year or so to your CFC sentence. So you stay away from walking across the cistern. You walk around it. You can walk like halfway if you want to take a picture, but don't go all the way across. But we don't cross the cistern until graduation. Another one is rubbing Clyde's nose. We have a statue of Clyde in Cougar's Mall. We rub his nose or rub his ears for good luck before a final or a big exam. And those are just the main ones I have in mind. Anybody else? Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. One of my uh, personal favorite traditions is that, well, I don't really know if it's like a specific tradition, but it is something that a lot of students do, whether they think about it or not. But when I first toured the college and then when 
I was accepted as a student here during my first week here. I took a picture in Cougar Mall, which is where our Clyde the Cougar statue is. And I actually took a picture with Clyde. And then usually when you're taking graduation photos or you're just preparing for ending your time here at CFC, you often also take a photo next to Clyde. And I just sort of like that because it does sort of show how you started at CFC and how you're ending. And it just makes you think about all the growth that you've experienced while here at CFC. And just sort of to echo Destiny, um, I definitely really enjoy our graduation ceremony in the spring. Um, as an orientation intern, one thing that we usually always do is show incoming students the graduation video. And so it, anytime I watch it, it always makes me tear up. And even though I'm finishing in December, I'm actually coming back in the spring to cross the cistern because crossing the cistern is such a strong tradition for C of C students. And I definitely just want to be a part of that. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much. And now um, moving into our next to last question. Uh, it is one of those very pertinent. Is there public transportation available to students if they don't have a car on campus? Charlie? Yeah, so there's um the Carta bus and there's also the Cougar shuttle. And if someone with a little more information on it wants to chime in, I don't want to get any wrong information, but just to kind of go off that, I will say Charleston's a very walkable city. And so I didn't have a car on campus until this my last semester of college. And it wasn't an issue until now or else I probably would have figured something out sooner. But um, it really is great because you can work downtown or you can work on campus and you can still walk there. Um, Harbor Walk is a sort um, like an off of our campus but it's another College of Charleston campus and there's a shuttle from there to the main campus so if you take a class there it's totally accessible and they help you with that and in general I think that it's um, very much a city that you don't need a car in. Charlie got it perfect. I just wanted to add that um, for the public transportation through Carter like he mentioned it's free with your Cougar card so make sure you keep your Cougar card on you so you can get anywhere you can take it to the beach you can take it to the mall um, just make sure you have that clear card so you can ride for free. All right, perfect. And with our final question, we're going to start with Katie, but open it up to the group. And if you want to keep it concise and like narrow it to the one thing that really stood out about a college Charleston and what separated it, we want to know why did you choose CFC? So one of the main reasons I chose CFC was that the campus is so integrated into the city. So there are so many opportunities to go and do stuff like not only on campus, but also off campus, just within the surrounding area. There's like internships, there's different like volunteer experiences you can have. So there's a lot of ways to get involved in the community around you. And that's something that was really important to me when I was choosing a campus and a school to go to is that I didn't want to feel like I was just trapped on campus and couldn't really go anywhere or do anything. And that's certainly not the case with CFC. There's so much in the surrounding area that you can get involved in. Rachel? Um, I chose the College of Charleston because of the programs through student ambassadors, such as MOVE and Senior Project that allowed me to see the campus before I even graduated high school and get a sense of community. Perfect, thank you. Uh, Caitlin, oh, uh, yeah. Um, Shai, do you want to add? Yes, I will. Um, one thing that I usually always tell students about why I chose College of Charleston is that it was sort of, uh, it was a very impulsive decision because when I was choosing colleges, I actually told my mom that I was going out of state for school because I just didn't want to be in South Carolina anymore. And CFC was actually the last school that I toured. And when I toured here, I just fell in love with the school. And just from everything from its tradition, its traditions to its location, to the way that it just felt like such a community and family feel, despite still being able to sort of branch off on my own into the city, was definitely what attracted me to CFC. And I can definitely say it was the best decision I ever could have made. Perfect, perfect. Charlie? Yeah, I would say one of my biggest deciding factors was the size. So it's 
a, around 10, 11,000 people. So it's big enough that it really feels like a college. You know, you have that big, um, a lot of people, which allows for a lot of different opportunities because there's so many people doing different things. But it's small enough that it really does feel like a close, like tight knit community. You get to know people, you see the same faces over and over again, and it becomes like, a, it feels like home very quickly because of that, which is incredible. I love it. And Destiny. So I um, believe for me, like I chose CFC for many other factors, including one um, with Mr. Quick, but why I stayed at CFC is more important to me. And I stayed because um, I found like many little families here. I found that my professors like looked at me as a student versus as just another person. They're very personable. I was able to take complete control over my education, what classes I wanted to take for the most part, and like when I want to take them, how I want to take them, as well as finding myself in these organizations and these jobs and learning like who Destiny really is. So I stayed at CMC because it just, I can, I saw like my potential being here. I saw where I could potentially go in my growth with the college. So. Perfect, perfect. And Destiny, I love that you brought it full circle. Um, you talked about convocation where you walk through Porter's Lodge and in Greek inscription, it says, know thyself. And at graduation, the hope is that you're entering the world with this knowledge you gain, not just from learning subject matter and learning material, but also learning who you are and what you have to offer to the world. So as you walk back out of Porter's Lodge from graduation, you're facing the world with this new self-knowledge and what you've gained from the College of Charleston. And with this, I want to thank our panelists for their great insight. And I want to thank you all for um, attending this session with us. Um, as Hannah said before, you're able to get in touch with uh, your admissions counselors, but you're also able to get in touch with uh, our students as well. So thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Fred, and thanks, student panelists. Um, that was perfect insight, as Fred mentioned, from our students. I couldn't help but thinking um, with their yellow brick backgrounds that all of our students and families attending today, just follow the yellow brick road to CFC. You're going to be in good company for sure. All right. Well, before we sign off, I know we've covered a lot of information today, but before we sign off, we have a very special surprise introduction. Uh, and if you were on time logged in, you might have gotten a sneak peek. Uh, but before we get started with this introduction, uh, we're going to run a quick video and uh, let's get started. Hi there, Devin. Can you hear me? Hey, Coach Kelsey. Yes, thanks for joining us this morning. Oh, man, I'm so excited to be here, and uh, I've been listening for the last couple of hours. Uh, people that have gotten to know me a little bit uh, know that that one thing in describing Coach Kelsey, the new head basketball coach here, is um, that I have a lot of energy. So I told people at my press conference that I got the short end of the stick in looks and in hair intelligence you know that's still uh sort of sort of the jury's out on that one but the one thing i got is a ton of energy i've been described as making coffee nervous so uh, i love when i speak to groups and obviously in person and i can see your response to my silly joke so uh hopefully you got a little bit of a chuckle out of you on that one i just want you to know that i can relate with you first of all all of you uh, and first of all, congratulations on your acceptance to College of Charleston. It would be the greatest decision of your young life to come here. And the reason I can really relate is I'm the new guy. Uh, I've been in this job for a little over three weeks. And the thing that I can tell you is I go on Zoom calls with our recruits uh, and I tell them about my initial experiences here. And when I walk outside this building and I'm in TD Arena, man, wait till you see this place, one of the dynamic settings for college basketball and how excited I am to have you here creating this raucous environment at our games. 
forget Clemson football, forget Carolina football. We're going to rock this place uh, here at TD Arena. But then I walk outside into this historic, vibrant city that has a pulse, that has a buzz, that, that, that just uh, invigorates me. It's so exciting. And what an unbelievable setting. And then you walk on into this campus, one of the most, and I've been in college coaching, higher education for two decades, and it's one of the most breathtaking campuses I've ever been on. But forget all that. You know, obviously the setting and the location and the great city and, and these resources that, that I have as the head coach in this athletic department, what makes this place great is the people. It's the people. It's the people that you saw on this call over the last couple hours, starting with our leader, Dr. Shu. What a dynamic leader with a vision that inspired me to take this job because of what he sees as the potential for this great university. You met uh, one of our dynamic leaders, Vice President Amy Takeyama Perez, uh, uh, the job Devin Thompson did on here, Lee Meadow McAlpin, Fred Quick, our faculty panel, those students. I mean, how exciting and dynamic to hear from those students. And I thought they did a wonderful job. Shy, Rachel, Charlie, Katie, Destiny. Um, and that's really what makes this place great. And as I walk around campus, as I walk around this community and I meet people, students, current students or alums, I ask them the question all the time, current student, how do you like CFC? How do you like the college? How cool is that? This logo that says the college, there's not a, another school in the country that can say their nickname is the college. That just gives me goosebumps. And to a person, when I say, how do you like it? The response is, I love it. Or I ask an alum, how did you like your experience at CFC? The response to a person is, I love it. And I think that is really, really cool. Um, people come back here and stay here. I tell parents on Zoom recruiting calls that don't take this the wrong way, but they're going to fall in love with it so much they might not want to come home when they graduate. You know, we have a current NBA player. Joe Chile, who's just an ultimate representative for our athletic department, basketball program, and university, who plays for the Charlotte Hornets. He has an injury that he's recovering from and rehabbing with right now, and he's right here in Charleston. Why? Could be anywhere in the world doing that. He loves it here. And, um, you know, with that, we can attract great talent, both basketball players, students, faculty, because People want to come here and then guess what? They don't leave. And why would you? Because this is one of the most dynamic places in the country to live and to work. I can't wait to see y'all on campus. I'm a big high five guy. I want you to know Coach Kelsey and I want you to be a part of what makes this university great and that's the people. I want to see you at our games. It's going to be so much fun when we do great things together, like win championships here in TD Arena. And you, as students, will be as big a part of that as me and as a head coach and all of our players. Let's do something special together. I hope you make a great decision and come to College of Charleston. Those of you that have already decided to come, welcome to Cougar, well, well, welcome to, uh, to our family. You are now Cougars. Um, I probably spoke a little bit longer than I was supposed to, but I just wanted you to know how excited I am to be here and to see you on campus really, really soon. As I keep saying, when I end every recruiting call or I sign off on every email, this is our city and I wanna make you a part of it. Go Cougars! Thank you, Coach Kelsey. Man, I don't know if I can follow up uh, with that hype. That was awesome. And we are so thrilled to have Coach Kelsey also join the Cougar family uh, and Cougar Nation this year. All right, students and families, couldn't have said it better myself. We are so thrilled to hopefully see you all here soon. As a reminder, you can always get in touch with us. We are here for you uh, now and as you continue your journey at the college. And one quick reminder, I am gonna drop a link in the chat. If you've missed any of our other Admitted Cougar events this spring and wanna review the information covered there, you can go back and look at those recordings on your own time. We thank you all again for joining us. Have a fantastic Saturday uh, and we'll see you in Charleston this fall. Take care.